Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soul scientist. So on this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about the very highly requested soil amendment, humic acid. And this trouble, this video is gonna get me in so much trouble, it's not even funny. <laughs> Dead serious. So I'll just preface this whole thing with, I think it's a total joke. And then let's just jump into the science. Humic ac acid is a component of something called humic substances. And humic substances is essentially the acid that comes out of decomposition of organic material. This is often viewed through the lens of the acid base theory. So humic acid <laughs> is something that can't be derived in nature, but can be derived in a lab. So you don't find humic acid necessarily outside in the great outdoors. Like you can't dig up a piece of soil and find a layer of humic acid and be like, oh, here it is, liquid form. Um, that's not the case. This is something that was completely made in a lab. Despite what everyone's saying that it's organic and it's natural, great, it is made in a lab. The fact that people sell this stuff is completely mind blowing to me. It is on Amazon and my Amazon store, I have quite a bit of pride in what I put in there. This product will not be in there. I will not put something that I do not believe exists or is not of any benefit in that store. And that's just the way it's going to be. You're gonna have to go find it on your own because I'm not gonna even link anything for this. So humic acid is actually made through applying a heavily alkaline mixture to organic material. Specifically, we're using hydrolonic acid and we're trying to get that pH onto the opposite side of the scale in the soil structure as a whole. The byproduct of using this acid on soil is humic acid, and it contains a whole host of groups in it, such as carboxyl and phenylate groups, and it functions as a dibasic acid, is how it functions within a soil system. Humic acid is not water soluble, and therefore it sits within the system and it can't be washed out. It is claimed that it can support around 50 to 90% of the cation exchange capacity in the soil. So because it has this really high cation exchange capacity, we like to refer to it as a battery or an absorption point within the soil that holds onto nutrients uh, tightly so that that nutrient can't be washed away with rainwater or with regular watering. So the theory with humic acid as a product for soil is that if we use it on our soil, we can raise our cation exchange capacity. If we can raise our cation exchange capacity, we essentially have more nutrients for the plant itself. But it doesn't end there. There's a whole host of other claims that come with humic acid and they basically consist of the ability to enhance soil microbes, the ability to chelate nutrients, which is a term, maybe I should do a video on chelation, but um, chelation is one of the benefits of humic acid. It improves compaction and porosity. So I'm thinking the brainchild behind this is the, because it is changing the dynamic of the soil so much through its pH that the intent is flocculation. They're trying to get some flocculation to happen in the soil, especially with a clay soil. It mitigates stress from pollutants and salts, and this goes back to the kind of exchange capacity. The theory is that the humic acid is able to pull the pollutants and the salts out of the soil and hold it tight so it can't be taken up by the plants or put into the water. And this, I always say <laughs> with a grain of salt, pun intended here, nutrients in many cases is a salt form, and it isn't bias like humic acid is not it's like charcoal it's like all these other ones that we talk about when we talk about soil amendments it doesn't have a brain and it doesn't say well i want <laughs> argon to be pulled out of the soil but i don't want nitrogen phosphorus or potassium pulled out of the soil it doesn't care it's going to hold and pull everything out of the soil and then just a generic claim of improves plant growth Love that, absolutely love that for us. 
So because humic acid isn't naturally occurring or we don't know, we actually have no idea if it's naturally occurring in the soil or not, we haven't been able to actually find it or isolate it or to pick it apart to know what's in it. Chemists can't do it, soil scientists can't do it. No one can do it except for the people who put solutions on it, on organic material and get this acid out of organic material in a lab. Because of that, you can't farm this, you can't just pick it out of the soil and market it. You have to process it. And the process for this is uh, through using dead material. And the deadest of the dead is used when it comes to making humic acid because not only is it very costly to extract this from the soil, because you can't just have soil. You'd have to have the organic components of the soil and you would need a lot of organic components from the soil in order to get this byproduct of humic acid. So what ends up happening is we use the deadest of the dead and we use coal. So we use sequestered carbon that is under the earth that is no longer affecting the climate or the CO2 amounts on planet and we are putting it in a lab and we are applying products to it to get this false product that we're not sure exists or not out of the out of coal to then put on garden plants which is the complete opposite of what the goal is when it comes to gardening and soil management is to actually sequester carbon. We want to take the carbon out of the air and put it into the soil. We don't want to dig carbon out from below the earth and put it on top of the soil. Completely defeats the entire purpose. Not only that, we are using coal, the evil black coal that everyone despises right now. So the further irony to this entire thing is that it's not organic because it can't be produced out of the soil. It's coal from underground that is then processed similar, actually very simil similar to how normal fertilizer, like inorganic fertilizer that we label as bad and evil, it's actually processed in the exact same way. If you watch my inorganic versus organic fertilizer and I go through the process that is applied to making or inorganic fertilizer in that video, humic acid is made the exact same way. So the fact that it gets an organic label slapped to it, despite the fact that it is mined out of the earth, it is then processed with stuff that should not be going into the soil. And then it's, like, it's, it's processed with acid. And then the byproduct is humic acid, which isn't naturally occurring. And we're putting it onto this. It's just mind blowing how the system can tell you that that's organic and healthy. It just, I didn't write the rule book, but I don't have to agree with it. I will say that much. So save your guys' cash. Do not use humic acid. Actually, not only save your cash, I would typically with a lot of products, I'll say, give it a try. Like with Marifil, I say, give it a try. Or with, um, whatchamacallit there, that yellow, I'll put the bottle here, that yellow bottle thing that I did a review on. I say, give it a try. Uh, this one let's just not support this industry whatsoever. I find this to be so corrupt and so wrong. It's ridiculous that it can be even classified as organic, despite the fact that it is made in the same way that ammonium nitrate is made, for example, or urea fertilizer. It's made the exact same way urea fertilizer is made. So that is upsetting to me. I want to thank you guys for suggesting this video. I think it's a really interesting topic that we need to raise awareness about, but I just I simply do not agree with it. I don't think it works. And you can challenge me on that. I will come back at you hard and heavy because I got lots of studies to show how ridiculous this is. Now, there are studies out there that say that this stuff works great and it high yields and blah, 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 blah. It's, yeah, it may be the case. It probably does work, but is it ethical? No it's not ethical but it probably works because it, it does increase your kind of exchange capacity sandy soil probably works absolute wonders on sandy soil i don't know i just don't agree with it that's my personal opinion though i want to thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments below if you used humic acid what results you saw from it i can link some of the studies that i went through some are saying it absolutely does not work it's a complete false claim and then the other side of this whole thing is that there's companies out there there's research done that says that it does work however i don't know 
if they're paid off or not. That is an actual thing in research and science right now is that the companies or the producer of this stuff, whoever's trying to push whatever agenda will actually hire universities or departments of universities to give a positive review essentially based on science. So yeah, kind of like the milk video we did, the milk hack video where the gentleman hired the university to do a positive review essentially on using milk, leftover dairy milk on the soil. So yeah, I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.